Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'll be giving the American Imperial Stout my full guide treatment. In my usual fashion I will begin with a little history before then moving on to BJCP notes for competition before sharing a recipe writing guide on one of my own tried and tested recipes to this style. Along with recent brew day footage I will then show you the finished beer and give you some tasting notes and impressions. So let's get started with a little history. When we think of stout, often we immediately think of the Emerald Isles of Ireland, but the Imperial Stout actually originates from London, England. This Imperial version of the beer style was first brewed in the 19th century. The Russian Imperial Stout was also first brewed in London, but is named as such due to all of the trade England was doing with Russia for especially strong versions. This type was even stronger than the usual Imperial because it needed that boost to survive the journey by sea. It is fair to say that the American version is even bigger, notably boosting the alcohol, bitterness and roasted flavours. These days it is actually the US that is brewing the bulk of this style, which is also known as the American Double Stout. It also has to be said that the breweries of the US have done wonders for this style in general with some really creative recipe writing. If you are keen to try this style at its best, then shown on screen are some very popular examples. Let's now move on to the BJCP's impression of this beer style for competition, which I will condense down for key information. Do note that this is simply relevant for competition under the BJCP. So let's now work through this. Aroma, rich and complex with variable amounts of roasted grains, maltiness, fruity esters, hops and alcohol. Coffee, dark chocolate or slight burnt notes from light to moderately strong. Subtle to rich malt. Appearance, colour range from very dark reddish brown to jet black, deep tan to dark brown head, a well formed head although head retention may be low to moderate. High alcohol and viscosity may be visible in legs when the beer is swirled in a glass. Flavour, rich, deep, complex and frequently quite intense, with variable amounts of roasted malt, grains, maltiness, fruity esters, hot bitterness, flavour and alcohol. Medium to very high bitterness, medium low to hop flavour, moderate to very high roasted malt grain flavours. Often some dark fruit character, alcohol should not be hot, sharp or solventy, finish dry to moderately sweet. Mouthfeel, full to very full bodied and chewy with a velvety luscious texture. Gentle smooth warmth from alcohol should be present and noticeable. Carbonation low to moderate. Overall impression, an intensely flavoured big dark owl. Roasty, fruity and bittersweet with a noticeable alcohol presence. Dark fruit flavours meld with roasty, burnt or almost tar-like sensations. Like a black barley wine with every dimension of flavour coming into play. I am now adding to the screen both the BJCP vital statistics and the all-important BUGU ratios. Do note that these only apply to BJCP competition. Not all brewers, be they commercial or home brewers, stick within these guidelines. Though they do provide a reasonable guide to the style, and with this particular one a rather wide open in various areas. This section is now complete. Some of my viewers like to take a screenshot of this final screen for future reference. Let's now move on to the recipe writing section. There are two commonly used base malts, namely Palau and Munich, for this style. I have set these at common values of between 30 to 70 percent of your grist, but you can blend them both together to represent the end percentage. Palau is going to offer you more of a canvas to build flavour on with a higher amount of fermentable power compared to Munich. This means you will need to use more Munich usually to get to the same gravity compared to Palau. I say usually because some brands of Munich are different, but if you stick to the major malt houses then this is true. Furthermore, Munich will also offer extra malt grainy flavours along with a bready quality when compared to Palau. Munich will also contribute a darker colour, so you will understand that there is a trade-off here. Once again, this is what is true of major malt house Munich. It is fair to say that some malt houses produce a Munich malt that is more like Palau. Useful to know if you need Palau, but not so great if you want Munich and get Palau. Next up we have roasted barley and I suggest that this is used at between 10 to 20% for this style. 
This is simply a must-have in a stout style, contributing that classic characteristic roasted flavour that is vital. Roasted barley will also contribute some coffee notes along with ruby highlights within the end dark colour of the beer. Do not be afraid of hitting the 20% max here. It makes for a powerful roasted effect that is enjoyed by many. At a recommended level of between 5 to 10%, we now have flaked barley. This is mostly used for head retention, body and creaminess. It can be used at up to 20%, but this will move you away from the characteristic roast elements in this style, in my opinion, past 10%. We all taste things differently though, of course. As usual, we have our old friend Crystal Malt. At low colour levels, this will create caramel-like notes of flavour, as well as adding colour and head retention. At high levels of colour, it will contribute dark fruit flavours and perhaps burnt sugar qualities. An old trick is to use a little of both for this style, and I would suggest staying with a maximum combined total of 8% for this style. Because I am running out of room here, I have put both chocolate malt and black malt together, but only because they share the same suggested percentage of between 1-5%. to which is basically because they are both strong in flavour, usually an effect. Black malt for many brewers has been a grain to avoid. They will claim that this is ashy and acrid. Do be aware that this malt can vary a fair amount. I would suggest checking various maltsters for their descriptions. Black malt can contribute sharp roasted flavours, but can also be smoother and less dry when compared to roasted barley. Black malt is not a grain to discount as I see it, more a grain to experiment with and enjoy its unique contribution. This grain will impart much more colour along with its flavour as it is kilned at a higher temperature compared to chocolate malt. When it comes to chocolate malts, you can expect not only chocolate, but coffee flavours too. I highly recommend Wayerman's Carafa range if you can obtain them, which are available in both husked and dehusked versions. The dehust option will be less bitter and less astringent. It's important to realise that other types of speciality grain like rye or melanoidin can also be used here, as well as base malts like Pilsner or Vienna. Such is the diversity within this style, they are simply less common, and if I was to talk about all the possibilities available here, then it would need its own video for the time it would take. So please understand that what I have covered here is the core. This is certainly a great style to experiment with. Let's now look at hops. I guess when it comes to hops it should be clear that it is mostly going to be American varieties that make it into this style. Commonly used examples are Amarillo, Cascade, Columbus, Centennial, Chinook, Liberty, Willamette and Northern Brewer. A total of three hop additions are common, the first at 60 minutes for bittering, the second at 15 minutes for flavouring, and a late hop addition for aroma. This late hop addition is usually performed before the zero minute point, and no hop stand is required. Dry hops are unusual but should not be ruled out totally in small amounts, but do keep in mind that this is a malt forward beer style, not a hop forward one. Let us now finish up with yeast. For this style, British or American yeast is more than acceptable. If you are looking for a drier result, then go with American, or if you are looking for something not so dry, then go with British. For a not so dry and fast result, then Vosquake works very well. I have now added to the screen some examples in both liquid and dry form that will suit this beer style. One of the other considerations here is how long you wish to wait before a beer of this kind will be ready. Luckily stouts condition pretty fast in general, but in using regular yeast you will really want to wait at least two months, but far far better results in taste will be found in waiting much longer. On the other hand if you use Quake then you can expect your beer to be in a very good drinkable state within four to six weeks, and more than drinkable after just two. This section is now finished for those that like to take a screenshot, let's now move on to water profiles. It is fair to say that this beer style has stirred a lot of disagreement as to which water profile is best for it, more than usual in fact. Everyone can simply argue a case here. So I am presenting three different commonly used water profiles that I have enjoyed different results from for this style. It should be understood that we all taste things differently instead of arguing about what is best, I prefer a focus around what is best for the individual. So put simply, experiment and find what works best for your individual taste buds. One thing that is agreed on, pretty much, is that this style benefits from a pH in the region of 5.6. My tried and tested recipe to this style has been shared previously within a very recent video shown on screen now. 
This previous video offered a challenge where I demonstrated a method of mashing all of the grain bill at once with great results. For your brew you can try this method or use the more regular method of reiterated mashing which I have explained in detail within another video which is shown now. This guide explains the method with grandfather measurements but is relative to all brewing systems of a similar size and can be easily upscaled to larger brewing systems. Here is the overview to my tried and tested recipe to this style which is explained in the previous video. I have included this recipe in full within this video's description also along with a brewfather link. Let's now move on to my tasting notes and a look at the final beer. And here is the end result. I actually got more carbonation than I expected from this one, but it works very nicely for this style anyway, and certainly gives a nice amount of heady foam that hangs around for the party. As you can see, this beer is pitch black. Let's get started with the tasting notes. In terms of aroma, we have strong malt and coffee with a little caramel and chocolate. Flavour is certainly a lot more complex. You have a nice and rich coffee and chocolate with a velvet texture that finishes smoothly with a pleasant alcohol aftertaste. This one is definitely balanced in between dry and sweet. This is actually my preference for this style because too sweet can end up being too much towards the end of one glass, but I also feel that too dry starts to become too harsh. As you start to get further down the glass you will start to pick up caramel flavours and further flavours that are mostly hard to pinpoint, but are probably part of the rye within this one. This is for sure one to sip but not gulp. And here are some further notes. This recipe has never disappointed me. If you love a rich tasting stout with plenty of interesting flavour variations as you drink it, then you are bound to enjoy this one. And a final impression, a beer of deep rich indulgence that has a surprising level of complexity as it warms and you get further down the glass, ideal for celebrations or for when you really feel you have earned it. To join this channel's Facebook group please use either of the links shown on screen. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you've not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!